The Properties Inspector exposes object properties based upon contextual selections. This lesson provides an overview of this panel and demonstrates how the contents adapt to whatever is currently selected. So we have this basic project here, and it's basically just a drawing. There is no actual animation going on here, but I do have a number of different types of objects. For instance, I have this text object here that simply is a title for the piece. I have some basic shapes for the hills and the sky and so forth. And I also have a movie clip symbol instance on the stage right here. So why is this important when talking about the properties panel? Because the properties panel is contextual. It will change depending upon what sort of object we have selected at any given time. So we can see here, if I click off into the work area, that I'm able to adjust the properties of my actual document. I can adjust the publish properties, the properties of the stage, such as frames per second, width and height, and background color. And I can also see the Swift history here. So this allows us to see when we publish exactly how big any of this stuff will be. So the last time I published was on February 13th at 9 p.m. If I publish right now, going up to Control, Test Movie, Test, and then close that, we can see that today, March 2nd, um, we've published as well. We can see that today it's published and logged that as well. We can also clear that from here if we want to. So if I select, say, these hills right here, this is just a basic shape that I've created using the pen tool. So this registers as a shape in the Properties Inspector. And I can adjust things like the X and Y position by simply scrubbing these. I can adjust the height, the width, and so forth. I can also adjust the fill and the stroke. So perhaps I want this other color of green, or even maybe blue or something. I can do that from here. There is no stroke applied to this, but if I wanted to, I could change the stroke style and the width of the stroke. I could choose how the stroke actually scales. So I could scale only horizontal, only vertical, not scale at all, or normal, which is basically scaling both. And I can turn on stroke hinting if I want. And you can see as soon as I did that, it actually created a stroke for me to work with. We can also change things like the cap and join, and the sharpness of miter joints if we have chosen miter. So those are all things that we can do with shapes. What about a movie clip symbol instance, like the sun here? So you can see that there's a ton of different options that are exposed through movie clip symbols. We can change things like the position and size of our movie clip symbol. And whenever you see a little lock here, that means that you can lock both the width and the height. So we can make this larger or smaller altogether. We can change the 3D position or view using these translations here. We can also choose the perspective angle. and also adjust vanishing point and so forth. Of course, these are used with here the 3D tools, which we're not actually using in this case. So they're not as effective for a two-dimensional sun right there. We can choose color effects, so things such as brightness and so forth. And display, whether we want it to be visible or not. We can determine blend mode. and how to render it. So do we want to render it as it is, or do we want to cache or export as bitmap? These are mostly used when you're publishing for mobile. And transparency, if we do cache as bitmap, we can choose 
transparent or opaque. And we can create a number of filters and apply those to our object. So perhaps I want to do a glow for my sun. I can do that through here. So let's choose this text element now. When I choose this, you can see the properties inspector, of course, changes to display uh, text properties. I can choose from the text layout framework text, which is a new text type, which you can see has an abundance of different properties associated with it. I can also choose classic text, which is a bit easier to work with. There aren't as many properties, but in either case, you have things like the text color and the size of the text, the letter spacing, anti-alias properties. So do we want an anti-alias for animation, readability, perform custom anti-alias? There's all sorts of options when working with, with text here. We also have paragraph options, so we could center that if we want, change the paragraph spacing and margins. And under options, we can actually link to an external URL so that when someone clicks on it, they're able to visit there. And again, we have the filters panel. We can apply filters to this text. So these examples should give you a good idea of the sorts of things that you can adjust through the properties panel. Really, it can be used for adjusting the properties of any type of object within Flash Professional CS6.